Yes, you can start now, ma'am, please. So, good morning, everybody. Let us start today's proceedings. So, this is the fifth lecture in our web series, Nobel Prizes 2022. So, today we are going to hear about Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Joining two molecules orthogonally by a click. We, the Society for Promotion of Science and Technology in India, are holding this series of lectures in association with Indian Association for Physics Teachers, Punjab State Council for Science and Technology, and the Chandigarh chapters of NASI, INSA, and INYAS. I would like to add that today's lecture is practically in association with Department of Chemistry Punjab University, though it may not have been formally uh, notified as such. So once again, welcome everybody. And now I request Sri Dharamvirji, President SPSTI, to welcome all formally. Dr. Bandapadhyayji, Dr. Bhasin, Dr. Grover, Professor Kohli and friends, it's a privilege to welcome you all to this lecture, uh, lecture as mentioned by Kaya. This is, uh, we have been having lectures, awareness lectures on lecture on Nobel Prizes since the beginning of the society. And every year we conduct these lectures and we invite eminent speakers and experts for this purpose. So I am very happy that we have a very young, dynamic expert, Bandhapadhyayji from IIT Roper. And we also have Professor <clears throat> Sonal Singh, Department of Chemistry. Sorry. I'm sorry. So I apologize to Sonal and also my complaint that Sonal, you could have corrected. No problem, ma'am, no problem. So we have guest of honor, Professor Sonal Singhal, and uh, nobody could be better than her, as well as the guest of honor, Professor Basi, who has been a pillar and source of strength to us. And I also welcome Dr. Rohit Sharma, who will give introduction to the speaker. And I would finally say that we would keep holding these lecture series every year. And we request your association guidance. And also let us know the topics on which we can hold lectures for the benefit of our students, as well as the experts, young experts working in this area. With this, i like to once again thank Professor Bandhupadhyayji and other experts who are joining this lecture. Uh, thank you, Nirumbi. And now, now I request Professor Grover to give a brief introduction to these lectures. Professor Grover. Good morning, all. <coughs> I welcome all of you on the occasion of fifth lecture on Nobel Prize series 2022, which is being delivered by Dr. Anupam Pandopadhyay, a young faculty member from Department of Chemistry of IIT Ropa. The lecture is being delivered in the presence of guest of honor, Professor Basi, Emeritus Professor, Department of Chemistry of Punjab University, and Secretary of Chandigarh Chapter of National Academy of Sciences of India, NASI. NASI has been a co-spencer of these series of lectures ever since we commenced this exercise three years ago. Professor Basin has been an integral part of our organizing team, but today he is in a different role. He assumes responsibility as the guest of honor today. The suggestion for Dr. Anupam's name as speaker came from INYAS members from Punjab University. Anupam's lecture is titled as Joining Two Molecules orthogonally by a click, 
The Nobel Prize in Chemistry for year 2022 has been assigned to two professors who laid the foundation of click chemistry and a third professor who pioneered its utilization in living organisms. Dr. Anupam uses this technique of click chemistry to do peptide engineering. So I am tempted to use today's occasion to share with you our thoughts on the choice of speakers and the guests of honors for the lectures we have held so far this year. The first lecture on Nobel Prize in Physics was delivered by quantum physicist, Professor Arvin, who has been a professor at Isa Mohali ever since Isa Mohali came up and is currently serving as Vice Chancellor of Punjabi University, Patiala. He delivered his lecture in vernacular and we extended the partnership of our series to Punjab State Council of Science and Technology and Dr. Jitender Kaur, the Executive Director of Punjab State Council of Science and Technology, was a guest of honor during Arvind's lecture. The second lecture on Nobel Prize in Literature was delivered by Professor Pushpinder Sial, eminent linguist at Punjab University. She has the distinction of delivering all the three lectures on Nobel Prize in Literature since the year 2020. The guest of honor during her this year's lecture was Professor Rajiv Lochan, from Department of History, who is also an eminent author in the public domain, and he writes very frequently in the papers. The third lecture on Nobel Prize in, was on Nobel Prize in Peace. It was delivered by two professors of political science from Delhi, namely Professor Anup Anupama Roy of JNU and Professor Ujjal Singh of Delhi University, Professor Varendar Kumar, the Emeritus Professor of Department of Laws of Punjab University, was the guest of honor uh, on that occasion. The last lecture, the Nobel Prize in Medicine, was delivered by Professor Partham Majumdar, who has been an ex-president of the Indian Academy of Sciences, and he has also been the founder and director of National Institute of Biomedical Genomics. The guest of honor on that day was Dr. Girish Chandra, the former DG of CSI. Our next lecture would be delivered by um, uh, Ms. Mathley from uh, Delhi. She is an eminent economist and she and a financial co consultant to government of India. She very frequently writes in all in the media all over, papers, YouTube, uh, TV channels, and so on. And suggestion for her name came from Professor Arun Kumar, who has been guiding us in the choice of speakers for the Nobel Prize in Economics for the last three years. And Ar uh, Arun Kumar would be the guest of honor during the, next, the sixth lecture as well. So we seek out suggestions and, and seek advice from the very best uh, colleagues in the academia for these series of lectures. And this series has now attained some credibility and I'm very hopeful that we have built up a reputation that this series would continue whether the present organizing team exists or, or not in years to, to come. I think this series is stable now and it can be carried forward by the different um, organs who are cooperating to sponsor this series. So with this, I conclude my remarks for today. And back to you, Kia. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Grover, especially to have come on board with your bad throat and all. Thank you very much. And now I request <coughs> Professor Sonal Singhal, Department of Chemistry, Punjab University, Chandigarh, to introduce the guest of honor. Sonal, are you still the chairperson of the department? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, Professor Sonal Singhal, Chairperson, Department of Chemistry. Over to Sonal. Thank you so much, ma'am. A very good morning to all of you. I think it is my great honor and pleasure to introduce one of the most eminent professor of Department of Chemistry, Punjab University, Professor K. Basi, and Nasi Platinum Jubilee Fellow and Punjab University Professor Emeritus, former Dean Faculty of Science, and UGC CAS coordinator of the Department of Chemistry. Professor K.K. Basin joined Punjab University as PhD fellow under the 
guidance of eminent professor R C Paul. He started serving Punjab University from 1974 as teaching assistant in the department of chemistry. With more than 40 years of his devoted service to Punjab University, Dr. Basin has made seminal contribution in teaching and research. He is known for his research work primarily based on the chemistry of organosulfur, selenium, and tellurium compounds that have been recognized in the biological processes to catalyze the reduction of peroxide that are detrimental or to life his research work has been cited consistently in the latest encyclopedia book journal and peer reviews and has opened up new avenues in the frontier areas of the chemistry in his research tenure 30 plus phd scholars have got privileged to work with him with more than 180 research papers his keen research interest him six united state patents in his influential journey professor basin has been awarded with bronze medal for research by crsi bangalore in 2007 he has headed joint admission committee for punjab university ut college of education bsc honors school ba llb and mca with his capabilities of managing various responsibility at the same time professor basin has also served as coordinator of ugc net test conducted on the national level december 26 2004 bds entrance test in dr harvan singh just dental institute punjab university and barc cat nfs hwb and pcil training school examination he has also been as active member of punjab state council for science and technology chandigarh national academy of science ilahabad punjab academy of science patiala program advisory committee in inorganic chemistry dst new delhi sir your life has been inspiring for all of us thank you so much sir for bestowing us with your graceful presence thank you thank you sonal for reminding us what a distinguished person we have amongst us otherwise we tend to take each other for granted thank you uh, so professor bhasin we are waiting to listen to you professor k k bhasin professor k k bhasin our guest of honor for yes. today yeah am i audible now ha ji yes uh, good morning to you all uh thank you thank you sonal very much i actually forgot that i have got such distinctions <laughs> thank you so much for reminding me all because uh, uh you have read so many things uh, i don't think i even remember most of them thank you so much once again uh i think uh, i would like to place my sincere thanks to all my learned colleagues uh, professor dharmveer ji uh, dr kya uh, dharmveer professor grover dr kohli Professor Dua, so many other distinction professors are there, and uh, I think uh, in the presence of Dr. Anupam uh, Bandopadhyay, I would like to uh, present some of the important things so far as so far as uh, this Nobel Prize are concerned. So to start with, uh, I would just make a mention that Alfred Nobel was born on October twenty first, eighteen thirty three, in Stockholm, Sweden. He was a very fine chemist, engineer, inventor, businessman, and a philanthropist. He displayed an early aptitude for science, particularly chemistry. He was very fluent in having uh, six languages to his command. He made several important contributions to science in his lifetime. He is credited for filing his first patent at the age of twenty-four. and later filed as many as 355 patents his most famous invention was on dynamite a safer and easier means of harnessing the explosive power of nitroglycerin which was patented in 1867 he embarked on many business ventures with his family most notably owing bofors 
an iron and steel producer at that time, which he developed into a major manufacturer of cannons and other armaments. Unfortunately, he died on December 10, 1896 due to cerebral hemorrhage in his hometown, uh, in his hometown Remo, Italy, when he was only 63 years old. He is being remembered world over for instituting his lifetime fortune and realizable assets to be used in establishing separate prizes, which became known as Nobel Prizes. These prizes are awarded annually to those who during the preceding years have conferred the greatest benefit to the humankind. Nobel Peace Prize especially is offered to a person who has done the most or the best to advance fellowship among nations, the evolutions, the reduction of standing armies. Nobel Prizes were first awarded started in 1901. To salute the fond memories of Alfred Nobel for his contributions, the synthetic element, nobelium, was named in his honor with atomic number 102 in chemistry. Nobel Prizes are widely regarded as the most prestigious awards in the world available in their respective fields. The prizes ceremony takes place annually, and we all look forward eagerly in the month of October particularly in the, in the Daily Tribune, curiously guessing for the declaration of the names of the scientists. Each recipient, known as the laureate, receives a gold medal, a diploma, and a monetary award of 10 lakh SCK. A prize may not be shared among more than three individuals in general, although the Nobel Peace Prize can be awarded to organization of more than three people. The Nobel Prize beginning in 1901 and the Nobel Memorial uh, Prize in Economic Sciences beginning in 1969 have been awarded so far 609 times to 975 people and 25 organizations. I would just like to make a little mention just to, just to refresh your memories that the youngest person to receive the Nobel Prize was Malala Yousafzai at the age of 17, uh, so far as the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize was there in 2014. And the oldest person uh, to receive the Nobel Prize was Johan B. Uh, good enough at the age of 90, at the age of 97 in 2019 in chemistry. Another important thing I would just like to make a mention here is only person to receive more than one unshared Nobel Prize was Linus Pauling. Linus Pauling got two Nobel Prizes, one in chemistry and the other in peace. There are very many laureates who have received multiple Nobel Prizes. And I would just like to make, make a mention of Mary Curie, who received the prize uh, in physics in 1903, and another Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1911. Linus Walling, I have already made a note. And then, then comes Johan Bardeen, received the prize twice, Nobel Prize in physics, 56 and 72. Frederick Sanger received the prize twice, Nobel Prize in chemistry in 58 and 80. Carrie very sharpless uh, received the prize twice nobel prize in 2001 and 2022 and we all have assembled here today to listen about the nobel prize in 2022 and i would just like to make a mention here that married couples were also there to get the nobel prize i would just not make a mention accepting mary curie and Piri curie and uh, another important thing which I wanted to make a mention here is that very many countries got the Nobel Prizes and the, the one which got the maximum Nobel Prizes uh, comes from United States, then followed by United Kingdom, Germany, France, Russia, Sweden, Japan, Canada, and so many other countries. I would just like to make a mention that our own country got 11 Nobel Prizes and including the one 
who who are either the indian citizens or they come from indian ancestry or residency between 1901 and 2022 are uh, the nobel prizes were awarded 615 times to 889 people and organization and the only thing which i would like to make a mention here is that so far as the gender part is concerned the nobel prize uh, so far as a woman got 61 women got the nobel prize whereas 898 uh, people got uh, the uh, the gents got it so this is something which i wanted to show you so far as uh, the nobel uh, uh, prizes are concerned but i would just like to make in the end one more important thing that is on december 1919 1999 the norwegian nobel committee confirmed that mahatma gandhi the father of our nation uh, who was nominated unsuccessfully for the peace prize five times and in 2006 uh, the secretary of norwegian nobel committee mentioned that the greatest omission in our history of 106 year was that that mahatma gandhi was not decorated with the nobel prize i wish he could have been uh, alive so that he could have got it and uh, with this i think i would just like uh, uh, to thank all the organizers for giving me an opportunity to share some of the things so far as the nobel prize is concerned and i am very happy that uh, dr badav dai is sitting over here to start so thank you very much once again thank you professor basin for that very interesting update on the nobel prizes and its history now i request dr rohit sharma again department of chemistry punjab university to introduce today's speaker rohit please uh, thank you ma'am am i audible yes yeah uh, thank you ma'am it, it is a privilege of mine actually to introduce uh, today's speaker and who is also a friend of mine uh, Uh, Dr. Anupam Bandhupadhyay, Assistant Professor and Faculty Advisor, Cultural Affairs, uh, IIT Roopar. Dr. Anupam Bandhupadhyay received his Bachelor's in Science from University of Bardwan in 2004, and then he moved to uh, Banaras Hindi University for Master's studies. After a short period of R&D job in Synthetic Organic Chemistry, he joined ISR Pune in 2008. for pursuing phd degree he received phd degree under the supervision of professor h n gopi who is a very well known uh, peptide foldamer chemist and he um, since uh, his phd he has uh, professor uh, dr anupam bandopadhyay has been awarded ramanujam fellowship by scrb young investigator in uh, us gordon conference science talent attraction and recruitment fellow in mit and since 2020 he has been appointed in the editorial board of current protein and peptide science to gain better proficiency in biochemistry and chemical biology dr bandopadhyay joined boston college as a post doctoral fellow in 2013 with professor njamin gao and worked on primarily selective membrane lipid recognition expanding non covalent as well as covalent binding strategies further he continued another post doctoral experience with professor bradley lab at mit usa developing technology applied to higher throughput uh, throughput screening uh, utilizing synthetic mini protein was the major focus of his work at mit then after a short period of bridging post doctoral position at ncbs tfr since uh, january 2019 he has been appointed as an assistant professor at indian institute of technology roopar during his research career at iit roopar he is he has developed boronic acid assisted dynamic click chemistry and bio orthogonal reaction for protein modifications and bacterial recognitions he has published his research in many high impact prestigious journals like nature chemical biology nature communications pns jacks chemical sciences etc and recently has filed a patent also his research group fascinated uh, is fascinated to develop methodologies of click based peptide modification for cancer diagnosis and treatment so it is really my privilege uh, 
to actually introduce him because he is also a collaborator of mine in a joint project that we are handling under BRNS. Uh, so I will just like to mention about the Nobel Prize, uh, the Nobel Prize in 2022, which is being, uh, which has been awarded on click chemistry to three professors, Professor uh, Carlin um, Bertozzi, Professor uh, uh, Professor Bertozzi is from Stanford University, US. Professor Morten Meldel, University of Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. Professor Barry Sharpless from Script Research, USA for development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. So not in taking much time, I'll just like to mention a few lines about what the Nobel Committee has said about this year's Chemistry Nobel Prize. So it states that it just says click and the molecules are coupled together. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2022 is about making difficult processes easier. Barry Sharpless and Morton Meldel have led the foundation for functional form of chemistry, that is click chemistry, in which molecular building blocks snap together quickly and efficiently. Carlin Bertozzi has taken the click chemistry to a new dimension and started utilizing it in living organism, organisms. So with this uh, brief background, I'll hand over the the podium, the online podium to my friend and uh, today's speaker, Dr. Anupam Bandapaide, to take it forward. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. And Dr. Bandapaide, we are eagerly waiting to listen to you. Please start your lecture. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rohit. Uh, it's, it's really my pleasure to be uh, here to talk about this Nobel Prize lecture. And thank you for the introduction. Uh, I would like to thank uh, SPSTI and also guest of honor to give me this opportunity and platform to talk about. So let me share the presentation. Uh, so there's something already said. So something is already shared. Okay. All right. So can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, we can see. And am I audible? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Make it full screen. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so today's uh, lecture is regarding the, the 2022 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and everyone knows about it. So I will try this lecture to understand in layman language what is peak chemistry and what is bioorthogonal chemistry. So that's why I entitled my talk is joining two molecules orthogonally by a click. So the correlation between orthogonality and click, that I'm going to explain it later. But let me just thank, and with the due respect, with Professor Bartosi, Professor Meldal, and Professor Safles, who won the Nobel Prize due to introduction of revolutionary click reaction that won the Nobel Prize. And I'm humble as well as uh, with the due respect, I'm going to present this lecture. Their vision was finding a normal reaction which can be done in non-toxic way and benign condition, which can also work rapidly. Also their vision was not only that, that can be also performed this kind of reaction in living system to understand the molecule, how does it work in living system, which was not possible earlier before introduction by the Caroline Bartosi by orthogonal reactions. So today we are going to learn about them, how they work and why they are precise for this particular type of kind of reactions and why they are important, how societal impact they do have, all we are going to learn today's lecture. So let me just talk about first, what is orthogonal mean in a reaction? 
So, in a Euclidean geometry, in a mathematics language, if orthogonal objects are related by their perpendicularity to one another. So that means a particular two vectors, if you consider, they are independent having right angle, so they can independently run, they do not interfere. So it means this regard to the reaction, if you look at, there are two molecules, if you consider, they can join together and form a covalent bond without interfering with other molecules or any other reaction that is ongoing in that process. So that means they can run independently. So that's why they are orthogonal. And this way, actually the reaction conditions are modulated such a way so that you no need to play with the tiring protection, deprotection chemistry that a chemist play in his all life most of the time. So, but there are few reactions like that that could offer this kind of clean product by orthogonality. And that's what I'm just citing one of these particular paper by the Barry Sharpless, that clean chemistry, the diverse chemical functions from a few good reactions are only available. So that he was published in 2001. Now the question is, what is the genesis of this particular type of orthogonal reactions? Nature produces a variety of kind of molecules and chemists are fascinated to look after this particular type of molecule and would like to synthesize because organic chemists are always excited to see any molecules, how that could be synthesized. I can do the disconnection approach and make it, but that can be done by artificially. So let's say, consider like a, you can start with the starting material A if you want to synthesize this morphine, and then you have to go through the particular intermediates B and C, and finally you will get the product. But it will lead to other byproducts that is not environmental free. That is that going to be a, a in, environmentally, that can cause the toxic. Reagents, it can make byproducts, but nature produces by orthogonal reaction that intermediates and byproducts are consumed inside their body, or it can be excreted as a byproduct, which are green. So, to avoid this kind of particular type of intermediates, the click reaction being introduced, that's why the, this year, 2022, the three researchers, they won the Nobel Prize. Let's say as an example, if you want to synthesize a meropenane, it's a bacterial infecting, a disinfecting reagent that takes a six year for the industrial production. So that means it not necessarily, you have to always choose a natural product and synthesize them for a particular disease treatment. You can start with some molecule, innovations of some molecules using click chemistry, and that could be a new type of molecule that can actually help you for your particular purpose. And you can begin with the click chemistry that can change the game and immediately it can be further that it can transfer to the industry production. So that is the easy way you can make through the click chemistry, this kind of molecules. So therefore, as you can see, this picture demonstrates that the three researchers, they own the Nobel Prize by only clicking the reaction and making a simplest way, making this molecule. So let me just talk about the, the cream of the crop of click reaction. So where the, the genesis of this click reaction is, Traditionally, what we know as a click reaction from the book chapter, that is one three dipolar cycle addition between the azide and alkyne, which, which was discovered by Professor Rob Wisgen 70 years back. Professor Wisgen is an eminent chemist and polymath, and, and, and what he thought that time that a alkyne, which is relatively having a lower ground state energy that can react with 
azide, which is having a higher relatively energy in the ground state. If you put together in heating condition, they can combine and make this triangle compound. But the problem was that it can actually lead to the two VGO isomers, which is one four and one five. So these two VGO isomers, again, you, you need to separate them up. But anyways, this particular type of reactions that time, like 70 years back, it was very new. And because of this particular type of the invention, his publication matrix went very high. And this kind of reaction influenced a lot in organic chemistry community in late 1950s and early 1960s. He, he was a very good philosopher. And I must say about this particular lecture, one of his interesting philosophies under a person, most important qualities is a moderately good memory is the minimum requirement of survival in chemistry. So you need to have a, a good memory for, to survive in a chemistry. Well, so this reaction was further in 2001, in 21st century, the very early of 21st century, the, the Melden group, as well as Professor Sarbles groups, they realized that the copper catalyst bring them these two reactions together that energy, it can come to the same place energy level so they can react in presence of copper that can catalytically add them and make this kind of a triazole, which is geospecific, which is going to give you only a single product. And this type of reaction can work in a water and the product is quantitative, no byproduct, and it is rapid. So this also actually not required any purifications. So this is the traditionally that what we call, and in the book chapter generally being taught to the students that this is the click reactions, but this is not only the click reactions what the Sharpless, Professor Sharpless mean for, but this is one of the type reactions that they have introduced in industrial levels. And they have been used in a lot in many different kinds of productions. So like, as it has been, I said, the widespread application, they have seen to make the drugs, also fungicides, the different kind of dyes. This reaction also utilized to label protein and other kind of biomolecules. But what is click reaction mean for? It's just like azide and alkyne. Professor Barry Sarbles did not mean like that. Even the 2001, when he published this paper of azide alkyne click reaction, he said that there are few reactions in his lab also there that are also can be considered as a click type of reaction. Barry Sarbles was like a fond of fishing during growing up while he was growing up. And actually he was not fond of like a quantity of the fish that he can fish. Rather he was looking forward a particular type of species, which is an odd kind of species of fish. And over a millennia that turned out to be, it is not like a fishing a rare fish, a species of fish, rather a rare kind of reaction. So that is the click reaction what he conceptualized in 1998 and articulated in 2001 as a click reaction. So what is the click reaction? So click reaction is basically nothing but a simple and it should happen in benign condition. So a click type reaction must be modular, have a large thermodynamic diving force and take place rapidly in water with exclusive selectivity and near quantitative yield. And a layman language and to understand very quickly, let's look at the Lego. You have a different piece of building blocks, different color. If you want to make any kind of particular species, like as, a, as what I'm showing here, you can just click and then build it. That easy it is, it's supposed to be. And he thinks that olefins and spring-loaded electrophiles, that means higher energetic electrophiles, spring-loaded means, and heteroatom connections are the key elements in first and modular process that drove the reaction and the click reaction discovery happened. 
So this is one of the just examples that that time, 2001, when Barry Subject published that there are click reaction beyond azide alkyne cycloaddition that as you can see, the epoxidation and then this epoxidation, you can open it by the reaction with a sodium azide. You look at the yield is 97%. It does not give any other byproducts. Then for that, he utilized one of the well-known click reaction, which is triazole formation. Further, the intramolecular ester formation, which is lactonization. And then for that, this lactin is active enough, which is spring-loaded electrophile. This is, and now this any of free amine can react and form a amide. And it can lead to the varieties of molecule without having any major byproducts and this is cost effective way you can generate different kind of molecules. So that is the demonstration, the demonstration he wanted to show in 2001, that this is called the click reaction. You should add up such kind of molecule or invention such kind of molecule so that can be generated and easily transferred to the production. So next, the logic behind the discovery of the click reaction is the generating noble molecular properties, what he has established and shown in previous slide. But the question is how you are going to generate a noble molecular properties. And that time, the people are mostly fascinated with the, the natural products and their complexity is too much. But according to his thinking, it should be having a new kind of molecular properties that should be a noble and generated so how that can be generated? Joining up small molecular building blocks under benign conditions. So that is the click reaction. You should join it. And why that is required? The scientists and engineers not trained in synthetic chemistry can perform such connections operation reliably in industrial level. And that is why it is required because of the economical production. You need to use it at the finally in turn scale. So that's required the click reaction and that changed the game in this chemistry. So the, initially the, when Professor Shrapley's lab developed this kind of reaction as alkyne in presence of copper, they were happy. It was giving an excellent yield, like I would say 85% to 90%, but they were still curious about the water, the other, why that is not converting to the other 10%. I would like to see a 99.9% .9 of this product. Why that is happening? Why this reaction is not complete? They were curious to know about. And they realized that in water, the copper get oxidized in presence of oxygen and becomes a copper two. So that is actually not participating in catalytic cycle that therefore the reaction is stopping. So what they can do is they can use a different kind of reducing agent that can also transfer them back to the copper one so that can again participate into the reaction. That's what their hypothesis. And they realized after a lot of optimization that you can use a simple vitamin C by from the medical center, which is ascorbic acid that can transfer or like you can say, this reduce that copper two to copper one. And that can again participate in catalytic cycle that gives a quantitative yield. So technically, if you look at this reaction curve can be performed in orange juice. Orange juice is having vitamin C. So this reaction works. That, that's what they have tested. And they were so excited to test this reaction in neighboring lab in an old whiskey bottle and found to be that works robustly. And they were so excited about this particular reaction, which is actually a a, a, a landscape of this click reaction that that's why this reaction had been in the book. And traditionally we think about, this is the reaction that only click that is agile alkyne, that's cycle addition reaction because this works really, really well. So a year later, people realize that this reaction because of the copper cannot be performed in a biological system. Copper is a toxic, element that you know already. So therefore, what they did, they use a TBTA, a type of a ligand that can stabilize the copper. So then you can 
use this type of reaction in more stringent condition. That means in biological system. Now we will talk about the, the second professor who is sharing this Nobel Prize is a Professor Meridal. So what he did in his lab, at the same time, independently, he was also thinking about that, how this kind of reaction can be performed in presence of the copper catalyst and they use a mild base like DIPEA, triethylamine, lutidine, and this kind of a mild base or a strong base, they can use it and they can make different kind of peptido triazole on solid phase. My proficient Professor Mendel, Professor Mendel is a chemical engineer. So his interest lies towards the production, transformation of the particular technology. So he has been interested in combinatorial chemistry as well as making a different kind of molecules that can be utilized for the purpose of either disease treatment or the particular type of use in material chemistry or biomedical applications that I can show you. So his, his lab was dedicated to protein modifications and also his research interest lies under the surface immobilization. Because if you are going to code a particular chip that can be used for a sensor or diagnosis purposes, that particular microchip required to be coated with a, such a functional group. So when you re perform any reaction, so that should be quantitative enough because you do not have any other way you can judge this reaction is complete or incomplete. It's quite challenging. It's not at a sim simple reaction that you perform in RB, that you take the TLC and then understand whether the reaction is ongoing or how much amount of the starting material is left over. So that particular technology he has utilized for surface immobilization and that already he was sure about it, performing this reaction, this works reliably and also in quantitative manner. So therefore he has made a lot of combinatorial libraries for doing different kinds of screenings against a biological target, diagnosis for the detection key, making different kinds of sensors, solid phase, a lot of, because his interest was mostly with this kind of chemistries. And if you look at his publication metrics, you will be surprising that he has probably not published much like in very high impact journals that never much he has published. Because in engineering section, if you look at, they are mostly fond of publishing any kind of work in particular conference as a call for papers, we get an email like that way. So that's why the, his first reaction that is published in the GOC, that was first presented in the American Peptide Symposium, San Diego in 2001. And for the, the next year, he has published in Journal of Organic Chemistry, this paper. So now we will talk about the, the third person who, who is really a good mentor as well as like such a nice person that who has further took this click chemistry in a different dimensions. And he has coined the term that is bioorthogonal chemistry. And Professor Bartosi was, was the first person who started this kind of reaction to understand or modify the cell surface. What is the bioorthogonal reaction? It is a type of a click reaction, but it precocide highly stringent conditions that can be performed this kind of reaction in biological system. So what are these particular stringent conditions are? Quantitative yield in physiological system. So earlier the click reaction was just said like in water. It can be performed in water, but what she proposed that it has to be a highly stringent, a reaction should be quantitative yield in physiological system. And it should be extremely rapid. The reason behind it should not participate. That means if you would think about there are two particular chemical molecules, 
then they should not participate into the other kind of reactions. And they should be biocompatible, should not be toxic, and orthogonal to biological system. That means these reactions should not interfere with other kind of reactions is occurring in biological system, or they should not interfere with reactivity with other kind of functional groups. And it has to be quantitative trans transformation has to be done at the druggable concentration. So earlier the click reaction, we have never mentioned that how much concentration is required. Because when you dilute and dilute, so the, the interaction between two molecules that becomes you know, negligible after some time. So that is minimum driving force is required to join these two molecules. But you have to develop two, two particular types of molecules. They have such kind of intrinsic property. They can come together, whatever the dilution factor is. It's like in a druggable condi condition you can think about, so they can join together. So that was the, the stringent condition that she put it. And also the reactants and products should be stable in biological condition. So this is a really, really a highly stringent condition. Only if you can develop such kind of reactions, then you can perform this kind of reaction in biological system. But you may ask the question, why you are thinking to perform a particular reaction in biological system, you have an RB in the lab. But that is not the fact that you realize in a minute that what is the really game-changing chemistry what she has proposed. In 1997, that was a few years earlier than the, the click chemistry, which is azide alkyne click chemistry being developed by the Sarflis lab and uh, Milder's lab. She was curious that how the cell surface glycine can be labeled. So that time, the few scientists, they have developed the technologies as well as they have realized the mechanism the how the sialic acid can express the cell surface glycan. Why the sialic acid I'm talking about? Because sialic acid, or she was interested, because sialic acid is a nine carbon, a particular type of sugar. It's a special type of sugar that actually tells about the disease condition. Also, if you, you may see that the reported in the literature, the Overexpression or aberrant sialation is a kind of a biomarker that if a tumor is or cancer progression is going on towards the particular type of from tumor to cancer, it is transforming. And that time she wanted to understand or profile that particular biological system, the how much basically you can see that sialyl glycan that expressed on the cell surface of the glycan. So she wanted to tag a particular type of like a sugar, like a manosamine or kind of a sialic acid analog with a molecule, which is the one of the partner of click reaction. And that time the azide alkyne was not discovered. And she thought that we will do the hydrogen formation and so that way we can understand the cell surface. So what she did is, this is the mannose derivative. She modified mannose amine derivative. She modified with a keto functional group and then feed it this kind of molecule into the cell. And cell uptake this kind of molecule and through the metabolic pathway, cell incorporates in the cell surface glycan. And eventually, that these particular functional groups exposed to the cell surface glycan. And further, if you have a tool that you can particularly capture this particular type of functional group without disturbing the, the biological system so that you can claim as a big reaction or bioorthogonal reaction. So what she did that time that this was functionalized by the keto cell surface was and then by a simple hydrazide, she ligated, and this was basically tagged by the fluorescence. So you can see the cell surface under the microscope, reliably normal cell versus a particular cancer cell 
that you can easily rely, realize that cancer cell overexpress sialic acid cell surface. So, but the problem was that time the reaction suffers with slow kinetics under physiological condition. This reaction actually very, very slow. It takes days and you require to have a slight acidic condition to perform this reaction. If you look at the mechanism, there is in, in the red determining step is dehydration process that requires the acidic condition to dehydrate quickly. So that was, she was not happy with that. And she was thinking about the, how we could modify such kind of reaction so we can perform in physiological condition and we can see cell surface as soon as possible. So that time she, her, in her mind, it was always going that how I could improve the kinetics of a particular reaction, given that all kind of other benign condition should be intact. That I already spoke about what are the highly stringent condition are required. So now what she thought after that, she was fond of the azide molecules. She loves the azide molecules and realized that a Stodinger ligation can be applied to do such kind of reactions and if we just coat a sialic acid with azide, and you can perform a reaction Stodinger ligation that is known as a Stodinger Bartschogi ligation nowadays. So you can look at it as a phosphine molecule that can react readily with azide and form such kind of amide bond, which is really, really stable. And with that, she, she published a science paper, as well as she showed this kind of reaction can work in vivo. And then again, she published another nature paper and concluded that the ability to tag cell surface lichens in vivo may enable therapeutic targeting and non-invasive imaging of changes in glycosylation during disease progression. So she can monitor the cancer progression. She can monitor the diabetes progression. But the problem was she was still unhappy because the reaction kinetics was very slow and the phosphine she used that reactant are, that, that reactants are not stable under physiological condition. And also, it released a byproduct phosphate. That was also, she was not really happy about that. She wanted to again improve about how reaction candidates can be improved, should not take more than an hour to, to click this reaction and we can immediately understand and locate where the molecules are, and we can real time image the molecules that are moving different metabolites, all that kind of things can be easily understood inside the cell. Further, she has developed SPAC ligation, which is strain promoted azide alkyne cycloaddition cyclo ligation for in vivo imaging purposes. So let's First, understand what is that? As I said, she was fond of the using azide because she loves this type of azide molecules that you, she can easily incorporate inside, even in living system. And then what he thought that azide can be clicked with the strained alkyne. What is, what is mean by the strained alkyne? That if you look at this particular type of molecule, there's a cyclooctyne. She realized the cyclooctyne does not react, but in presence of a difluoro at this alpha position, electron withdrawing group, it becomes really strained. That means the alkyne, as I said, the terminal alkyne, they're relatively stable in the ground state and azide is having a comparatively higher in energy state. So they need to bring up together copper catalyst by the star place and metal it bring up together and make this reaction, but she doesn't like the copper because copper causes toxicity. So that's why she wanted to have a complete organic reaction. And azide and alkyne can be reacted by promoting strain in particular alkyne derivative. And she introduced this difluoro, this particular type of uh, this uh, cyclooctane alkyne. And then she imaged a particular, this kind of zebra fish, and as you can see, and she has published this paper that 
two paper in the PNS 2007 and a science paper to show that, that you can actually image in vivo and you can take the embryo of zebra fish after a one minute of this particular reaction, as you can see, that's a, that's a fluorophore and mixtures are going and you cannot see the resolution properly over the time, 15 minutes, 30 minutes and 60 minutes, you can see wherever that exactly this particular type of the CLI being expressed, having a azide that being reacted with this particular reagent and this is prominent. And what she was realized that the jaws of this uh, particular zebra fish, fins, and their uh, other places also, you can see there are overexpression of the sialic acid and that can actually perform the click reactions. You can easily track them inside a living system. But this kinetics was still like, she was not really fascinated about that because this is 17 to 60, three times greater than the rate constant of the Strodinger ligation. But as you can see, the second order constant is 0 0.08 mole inverse second inverse. It is actually not that level what you wanted to have. The rapid reaction requires to have a minimum of 1000 mole inverse second inverse. So what, This is not, okay, all right. So, <coughs> so further, she used this particular type of chemistry to treat the cancer using this bioorthogonal type of reactions. So what, what is that basically? So if you look at, as I said, the cancer cell overexpresses the sialic acid at the cell surface and aberrant sialation in cancer and tumor cell is a general phenomena and actually considered as a biomarker. And that is the way it, our cancer cell and tumor cells that evade immune system. So our, that means that our immune cell cannot recognize the cancer cell and tumor cell because of this particular sialylation. And what she has proposed that you can actually tag an antibody, do tag with azide and react an enzyme that can chop out this sialic acid from the glycan, from cell surface, do the reaction, which is click reaction, and that way you can be able to conjugate an antibody, an enzyme, throw this kind of molecule to the tumor sites or near the cancer sites, there, this antibody can tightly recognize that particular type of receptors. And then this enzyme can cut off all the sialic acid that way. So that can be the like aberrant sialation can be removed. Then our immune cell can easily recognize. And that way you can see a simple treatment that is immunotherapy treatment that you can do it. So that way, a simple and natural way that you would be able to destroy a cancer cells or tumor sites. And she has recently, 2020 Nature Chemical Biology, she has published this work and demonstrated the, the powerful bioorthogonal reaction that can change the game in biomedical science. So other than that, like now many people are following this bioorthogonal labeling techniques to understand molecules inside the living system on real time. So this is one of the examples, as you can see, different kinds of metabolites you can use to utilize. If you want to use the azide alkyne click reaction, either you can modify sugars with alkyne or azides, lipids, you can modify it with alkyne or azides, different kinds of amino acids and different kinds of cholines. You can just feed it to the cell and based on their uptake in a particular organelles that will be overexpressed either in that particular membrane or in other surface. So, or membrane surface. So you can further track them by this click reaction. And because of these moieties are very small, they can easily reach to the very fine and crowded biological system where the many reactions are ongoing and that can react 
orthogonally, so it should not interfere, and you would be able to understand the property of these particular organelles in real time. So that's the actually thought that she proposed, and now you realize why you would like to perform this reaction inside the biological system. You would like to know the biological system, without it, nothing is possible in the biomedical science. So therefore, this is kind of a reaction that particularly changed the game and given the different dimensions to understand scientists that how you can perform reactions inside the living system and you can track on real time a particular molecules. So these are the different kind of examples that I'm shown here, like a mitochondria phospholipids that you will be able to see the membrane. And this is a kind of certain tumor what expresses the sialic acid that has been clicked and imaged. And you can also be able to track the neuron that they're in the, in the cells that are overexpressed sometime in, in disease cases that, that overexpress particular type of the sialated glycans that you would be able to track it and profile with the normal cells. So that way you can distinguish a normal versus cancer side. So now if you look at the develop the major bioorthogonal reactions that copper catalyzed alkyne azide reaction that I already have discussed about. And then after that, Professor Bartosi has developed the strain prohibited azide alkyne reaction that uh, this is the demonstration that you can see simple alkyne cannot react. How that if you put the particular type of strain that will allow to join the azide and alkyne at room temperature and biological system. But again, as I described, this requires really this kind of reaction requires in living organism to be really, really fast. Uh, it should be thousand and more than thousand mole inverse, second inverse, second order kinetics. So that way, if you use a very small quantity in a druggable concentration inside the living system, you will be able to reach these two molecules together and they can form the covalent bond. That way we'll be able to track the molecules, biomolecules in the living systems that how they are behaving. And these are the further took a new dimensions by the different groups that the Professor Bartosi's uh, students and uh, different other group, Fox group and Jennifer group. They have further introduced the inverse electron demand disorder reaction. So this is type of like, if you know the simple deal solder reaction where the diene and dienophile, they worked as a diene homo and dienophile lumo. If you switch by the electrochemical behavior, changing the electrochemical behavior. So that way you can actually close their energy that dienophile and diene together so that they can readily react and that should be very fast. They have given this idea and now these kind of reactions are really, really popular and people have been using this for this particular type of bioorthogonal reaction in the ever. This is the reaction that's recently discovered in five years back, uh, also in IIT Roper, also some kind of this bioorthogonal reactions. And we have also demonstrated that this is a really, really bioorthogonal reaction. You can perform reaction on cell surface. And after immediate, like getting the Nobel Prize, the chemical size, they did a tweeting that highlighting our particular this, uh, review article that there are many things has been discussed regarding the click chemistry that, so the thing is, you know, the idea comes from the leaders, but that has been put forward and utilized to, in an impactful manner. So that is the way the transition happens and make a history of chemistry. So that is the way my philosophy is, a scientist's life is more enjoyable when others validate his or her scientific philosophy impactful. So that is required in our scientific life. And with this summer, uh, to summarize this, the three researchers honored for game-changing chemistry, including reactions that can be run in living cells. And the development of click reactions has highly impacted in economical industry production, as well as saved the environment, which is very important nowadays, which eventually helped the society. 
the production of drugs, fungicides, many agricultural, other pesticides, the different kind of dyes, then changing the this molecular properties of a, a biomolecules. You can tag with biomolecules, different kinds of biomolecules, protein, DNA, by this click reaction, because they are orthogonal and not going to interfere with any functional groups or even in biological system. So that would be performed inside the living system. So with that, I'd like to just, this is my last slide. I would like to give the message to the new generation, the Nobel laureates message that Professor Sable said, just a handful of good reactions are needed to assemble first numbers of highly diverse organic molecules. That means you don't need really too many type reactions to generate the varieties of the functionality or diversity of the functional groups. So you need few reactions that will be able to do it, join it differently, and then you can make a different kind of molecules. Also, perhaps a metal to the, to the nature paper, he said that we changed some concepts in chemistry which allow you to do things that were never possible before. And this is the most inspiring message from Professor Bartosi, what she shared, that I think the field of clique chemistry is still in its early stages. And there is a probably many new reactions to be discovered. That tells about the new generation can think about this type of reactions a lot. And there are a lot of scope in this particular field. So you can think towards this line, would be able to have a many discoveries. So with that, I would like to thank all of you by click. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'll be able to answer you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bandapadhyay, for introducing us to this fantastic field. Introducing people like me, chemists must have, must have known about this. Very nice talk. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Very interesting. So now, please raise your hands if there are any questions. Mohit, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. We can assume the action conditions for cycle. Kind in place of yes, that's what we can do. I have shown it, but it has to be strain promoted. Yeah, uh, Anupam, maybe you can just repeat the question first for the sake of audience. Okay, sure. So uh, Mohit asked me that, sir, can we use is cyclic alkyne instead of a terminal alkyne in this reaction? So as I already have shown that. The strain, it requires a strain to promote this reaction to be happening in biological system or in benign condition. That's the condition has to be. Otherwise, you can also perform this reaction, but may not be in the room temperature. You could be able to do it. You may require to heat it, but it is possible. Others, please raise your hand. I think everybody is so floored. Professor, Professor Machine. Professor Machine wants to ask. Yeah. Dr. Bandabhajai, I would like to congratulate you for the very nice, very, very nice talk in, presented in a very simple but sophisticated manner. Thank you very much for highlighting us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So Anupam, if the field is open, as she says, so is there a lot of activity uh, amongst the young people in India to take it for further? Because, you know, absolutely, Indian absolutely. community That's what... is very good in uh, this kind of areas, you know. Uh, yeah, I... So the chemical biology is the strength of India. Chemical biology, if you look at the strength of this India is... <laughs> It's 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 like really small, really small. That community is. But today there are a large number of you in the ISAs and the new IITs. There are so there is young faculty everywhere. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. IITs sure, and ISAs, there is young faculty. There is young faculty right. also in the central universities of India. So, you know, the young faculty which has entered the central institutions in India in last one decade, mm -hmm. it has no precedence. It has no precedence. Right, right. Okay, so you are, you should form, what should I, critical size groups and wherever there is a potential for taking things forward, particularly sure. which has applications. You know, this, this field has applications, immediate Absolutely, applications. Sir. Absolutely. So the government also should be supportive of promoting and putting in money in these fields, okay, where traditionally we have strength. So right. chemical biology has been the strength of India ever since the early 50s. Right. Sir, sir, if you see uh, the Nobel Prize also for last 20 years in chemistry, you will see that uh, most of the applications of chemical biology has uh, received Nobel Prizes for at least seven to eight times in last 20 years. Yeah. This is also a futuristic field yes. in that way. And you will see in coming next 10 years, at least seven to eight will come from the applications in biology of chemistry. <laughs> so say we Nobel, need this type of thing. Yeah. Say Nobel Prizes. Okay, one thing, yeah, but I agree. having an impact, having a satisfying contribution, having a contribution which mm -hmm. benefits the community, there are so many other things, you know, one, it's not just one, no one prize just happens, it will, somebody will get it, somebody will not get it. But doing these things which are at the frontiers of science, which are useful, should be satisfying. It, if this is not Atmanirvartha, what else can be Atmanirvartha? Yeah, Anupam, there is another question from Mohit, uh, which states that can we perform the reaction at the temperature range of 60 to uh, 80 degrees Celsius? Well, so basically, if you want to do a reaction in RB, I would say like, why 60 to 80? You can do it, whatever. But the here, the point is, if you want to do such kind of reaction in a room temperature, probably you have to tune the electrophile and nucleophile such a way so that energy should be same. But if you are just want to have a simple reaction to get the product, yes, you can perform this reaction. It may not, I don't know your substrate. It may, may not work 60 to 80. It may require more than that. Okay, so it depends on your substrates actually. Okay, so can I ask one one question only? Uh, yeah, sure, the, sure, the sure. For the sake of uh, audiences, uh, what about the generalization of this reaction? Like, uh, for example, we need for click chemistry. We need, uh, as the the earlier discoverers have shown, that we need a alkyne part and also a, another part which actually clicks. So how how well this has been generalized since then? Because the first report came twenty years earlier. So if you look at the actually applications and the number of publication has come from the different, that's what my philosophy I have proposed. Like once, you know, scientific life will be more enjoyable than the other person can validate that. So other than these scientists, I would say this reaction is so popular. A lot of people has done many things actually to tag the DNA, tag protein, as well as many other kind of reaction, immobilization of the cell surface or like any um, solid surface, a really, really lot of examples are there. And because of that reason, actually this reaction becomes so popular and it works robustly. So it has been generalized a lot. Though so, you know there are, of course, always each, everything is not perfect. Okay, so that is what, you know, once you want to do the click reaction in, in a, a, a live system, the Professor Bhattuji always preferred the two molecules which should be organic, maybe no more metal. So that is much better. So there will be no other, you know, kind of your uh, liabilities, I would say, the thinking that whether it could be a toxic, whether you need to taste or what it is. So this, this is the actually the trend is going on. That's what I also showed it that I now started because I do the research on boronic acids to make it a click chemistry. So they developed this particular type of diazaborin reaction. 
it works like so fantastic you will be realized that it, it works cell surface on the cell surface and uh, you can compare without even uh, having a click reaction you can perform before that you know on uh, before the cell surface and on the cell surface you will see the result is same Professor Kohli, do you have a click cameras in your staff? Uh, no, <laughs> no, not yet. I, I have a very, you know, innocent question to Dr. Anupam. Yes, sir. If yes, I sir, could yes, understand, sir. if I could understand rightly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That uh, these click reactions are natural also in nature. Yes, yes. And are there no click reactions already available in biological systems where all the reactions are in the aqueous phase. Yes. So if, I... it is so, if it is so, the pharmaceutical chemistry, chemists, they must be doing all this. They must not have been synthesizing it in the lab. Otherwise, whatsoever drug or whatsoever thing they're doing as in, you know, for the cure, there may be some such click reactions and were these not ever understood earlier? Yes, sir. So this is this is a very nice question, sir, what you have stated earlier. So now industry is moving towards this way, actually, sir. So all enzymatic reactions, you can say as a click reaction, actually. This but is- these were, were, were these not understood earlier? No, no, no. It was sir, understood earlier that this is the thing, but you require to have a kind of a enzymes for this reaction. Mm -hmm. So these some most of the enzymes are not stable in simple condition. Actually, it you require to have a, a really biological system to to make it survive this kind of enzymes. So now people what they're trying to do is they're engineering different kind of enzymes so they could be you know stable in room temperature or like you can see then India uh, sometimes like you know the temperature goes very high so some places like very low so they have op they're trying to optimize. So so this kind of enzyme can work outside the living system as well as it can perform over like a you know range of temperature so this i think the companies are tending towards this way for the production so this was already known that's what i said like where is the genesis of these orthogonal reactions because of mother nature so they what they thought is that whether this kind of reaction can be done in a simple manner without enzymes without anything just simple the two molecules you take just throw it, as I said, like they have tried in a whiskey bottle. <laughs> it is so crazy to look into the, how robust this reaction is. And it works. Yes, sir, Anupam. Yes. Uh, can I continue over this one? You see, you said high temperatures, very high temperature. But if you look at the malignant tissue, the change in the temperature, uh, change in the temperature of the cells, which are the victim of malignancy, mm -hmm. is the tune of one degree to two degree only. And the oxygen requirement goes almost four to five times. These, these small, small, uh, subtle changes in a malignant tumor, how do they affect uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, click reactions positively, probably, or they, some of them are probably positively going, some of them suppressed? Because the temperature, if you get the outside temperature of the malignant tissue, it is around two degrees more, oxygen requirement about three times more. Right, sir. How do you react to this? So, so basically, sir, I would say that uh, the artificial, that what the click reaction being developed, if you talk about that way, uh, they also mm -hmm. say like they, they are not really affected much by this kind of environment. Okay. But if you, no, they are not really, they, they are robust, sir. They, they, you can perform this kind of reaction in even, uh, you know, two degree, you can perform this reaction in even 80 degree, doesn't okay. matter. So okay. they are like robust reaction. So now the speed of the reaction may differ a little bit here and there because while temperature you are making lower, so you are freezing that molecular movements to react. So that's the thing, kinetics gonna a little bit change, but I think the reactivity, they are really, really reactive, that's what, People have already uh, published. Any idea about Q10 level? Q10 uh, level. Uh, reaction in, in what side? In Q10 level, is it 1.5 or 2 or 
around one only. If it's one, then these are the physical changes. If it is around two, Q10, but every 10 degree radiation temperature. Quotient, Q stands for quotient. Q is quotient. Okay. Of quotient. okay, okay, okay. So, so these are the things like maybe very detailed need to be again performed as she said, she said that this is open to everyone. Maybe this can be applied for a very certain specific application and based on their requirements, they can tune this particular type of reaction, understand how the changing is happening with the 10 degree, 10 centigrade or anything. Maybe people have not done yet these things. And these follow Michael Menten's equations. Yes, 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 of course, of course. Sir. Of mm -hmm. course. No, even when you, when you say that the, uh, the, uh, these uh, click reactions do not require uh, enzymes. <laughs> right. Without enzymes, also there are reactions going on, but the enzymes they enhance the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. True. So there are so many reactions in the biological system, which is a very complex system. It is not as simple as very complex the, system, sir. Of course, I agree with you. So in those systems, the enzyme increase the rate of reaction, otherwise, reactions are going on. Right. So exactly. in a way, are you trying to say that there would be no need for enzymes? If there is a click reaction? Absolutely. I doubt. I doubt. I doubt. Uh, yes. uh, no, 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 sir, sir, sir. So basically, so you are saying that, okay, all right. So first of all, sir, one thing you are talking about in the biological system. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about outside the biological system. In the even, if, even, even if you talk outside the biological <coughs> system, the, you know, the kinetics is going to be, be almost the same. It is a aquatic system. So, so, first of all, the, in biology, the reactions, whatever is going on, I would say they are not very fast. So now, as you said, like enzymes, they are acting upon so that it is making it much faster, this reaction is. Right, sir? So, that means this reaction, if you do it, that can happen. So, it depends like what is the concentration also. Because reaction, most of the reactions are concentration dependent. So, a reaction, if you perform in a biological, whatever, uh, in a system, the concentration is, same reaction if you perform outside, the higher concentration, it can work simply. See, some of the enzymes are such, uh, they need cofactor or coenzyme. Absolutely. To enhance the rate of reaction. And the yes. reaction is otherwise also going on. But in case it is a click reaction and we don't need any coenzyme, we don't need any cofactor or enzyme, the reaction right. is quick and it will be stable. Because most of the reactions, most of the reaction under enzymatic condition, they are oxidoreductase uh, reactions. Yes. Okay. You, reactions. Need a, you need a reductant, which is a cofactor. You need an yes. oxidant. Yeah. Yes, sir. In case this can be supplied from outside, the reaction can take place in vitro. But vitro yeah. reactions are not accepted because the, uh, the end product has to be consumed to, uh, to make the pace of the reaction forward. Right. But right. Kohli here is right that every reaction in a biological system by 99% has to be a reductase or ligase. Ligase right. is more important for your life. I agree completely, sir. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. See, I, 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 I you know, appreciate the significance of this uh, click reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, it is in the in, uh, uh, in vitro system. Yeah. But in vivo system will be too complex. No, in vivo system, I have shown that is that is yes, done. yes, you have shown yes, you have shown that it is complex, but the significance uh, in uh, you know potential for curing cancer or potential for uh, you know Alzheimer diseases or such uh, you know such diseases that is, un is under there. under clinical sir sir that is a one one particular drugs regarding this bioorthogonal using bioorthogonal chemistry is uh, mm -hmm. under development in clinical sense. What is that? That is a uh, Calvin Bartosis only. Well, which which type of cancer it is used? Uh, so exactly that details maybe. Uh, it might not be. Of course, it's not shared. It's confidential. Yeah, exactly. It has uh, this thing that is that is already there out. I mean, you can see that uh, C N E N. That you know that particular magazine. Yeah, yeah. So there it has come out that okay there are drugs from. Professor Bartosi, so that is uh, based on this particular type of reactions. So that is under clinical cell, clinical cell that uh, development. Even this this reaction is used in CRISPR technology also. 
in crispr yes i mean wherever people think that need to join something together they use it because oh, yeah. it doesn't require or harm anything in crispr they have to hook to the site of the gene with the help of protein which chops it off and that's yeah. very More complex that right. that one of the nobel prize six years back to the lady right right yeah professor krishnan was asking uh, maybe he was raising hand professor krishnan yeah uh, yeah very very nice uh, talk anupam yeah thanks thanks for <laughs> seeing me and being raised i was just listening to the other conversation so so the uh, anupam uh, i have a curious question perhaps in a bit orthogonal direction that uh, the, you have talked about a lot about the click chemistry it's really a wonderful chemistry but is there anything like an unclick chemistry like uh, the molecules are kind of uh, attached together but you want to kind of break them apart uh, in a, in an easier way so we we have many um, other type of reactions but something very which is very simple that you want to kind of um, uh, you 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 have uh, um, the the acid and an alkyne and you are clicking them to make make this uh, triazole and you want to break the triazole back into acid and alkyne or some other product is is there something yes, like that yes 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 I, i can see that the way the direction you are looking forward it's all about like how you can make it a biodegradable things <laughs> exactly exactly yeah true, true, true. <laughs> i i i got it to your points so uh, of course like you you there are like you know that uh, some disorder reaction they are reversible in nature you know about that so so this reaction can be done actually and in a certain condition uh, it can be reversed also like like the reaction i was showing that i developed this pi orthogonal reaction that is also reversible actually if you look at that is also reversible so if you put some strong oxidizing agent like a hydrogen peroxide simple so the boronic acid can be oxidized and then it can be released actually right yeah possible also if you put it this reaction what we have seen that if you use some other nucleophile alpha nucleophile especially so that can exchange that's very interesting that can exchange actually so like as an example if i used like semi carboxide to make a diazoborin and then if i throw it phenyl hydrazine it can exchange yeah we are loving this direction we are looking forward many things actually with this reaction do they also involve a copper one or some catalytic active site uh, with the reversible reactions um by the copper i i really i i don't know yet that with a copper anything can be reversed i really okay okay yeah fine fine yeah thank <laughs> thanks a lot and uh, it's very very nice listening to you thank you yeah thank you thank you thank you thanks to everybody and in case there are no more questions um mahipal ji check karenge facebook mein kuch aaya comments questions yes ma'am there no. is no any question on facebook ma'am yes okay thank you so nishima are you there uh, dr uh, yeah. nishima ma'am actually uh, she is having some internet issues so uh, in case uh, it is okay I, on behalf of inyas i can give the yes yeah, so, okay so on behalf of inyas as well as on behalf of all of us organizations please um dr rohit sharma will present a vote of thanks yeah rohit. thank you ma'am so uh, it is really a privilege of mine to be uh, to be uh, listening to this fascinating lecture by dr anupam bandopadhyay and uh, on behalf of uh, spsti Uh, nasi chap chandigarh chapter inyas chandigarh chapter and all the organizing team i i like to thank first of all uh, first and foremost to dr anupam for giving this wonderful talk and uh, letting us know about the discoveries especially in the uh, how this click chemistry uh, reactions work and i think this type of lectures are very important for expository lectures for students and uh, uh, we wanted to have it offline but uh, hopefully we'll have it offline soon and uh, uh, for thank you very much for sparing time anupam and it was delight on uh, our part to be listening to you for this wonderful talk my pleasure it's my pleasure and, yeah. <laughs> and i am really thankful to um, professor anu grover i think his uh, initiatives the way he has he uh, takes these things forward 
the, uh, the scientific vigor which he induces into the in these type of uh, discussions uh, sir you are really uh, re doing a remarkable job for uh, especially for scientific uh, for students who uh, who are actually uh, trying to learn a lot of things from these type of lectures thank you very much for your support and uh, dedication for this work uh, i am really thankful to mr dharamveer ji and uh, professor kia dharamveer ji for uh, taking this uh, initiative i think uh, ma'am uh, you spare your time every week or even in between weeks also and uh, we uh, we might not be uh, coming on board but we always try to see either through facebook or otherwise and the the type of exposure that spsti is given to people like us is really remarkable and uh, uh, we are very thankful to you for in taking this initiative and uh, we are also lucky to be part with spsti from the part of nias as well as i would say from nasi's chapter also if professor basin allows me to say that so thank you ma'am for taking this initiative and thank you dharambir sir for giving this opportunity to all of us uh, my sincere thanks to my teacher and uh, my senior colleague in the department professor kk basin ji who is a, a remarkable person a very positive person and always supporting us with the, his uh, inputs and uh, the way he has uh, conducted his himself in the department is an ex example for all of us uh, juniors like us so sir thank you very much and we are honored to uh, you being the guest of honor today i think thank you for sparing time and uh, really looking forward for your further support in the department as well as otherwise in our professional careers uh, my sincere thanks to uh, our chairperson professor sonal singhal who was uh, uh, initially with us uh, the way she uh, has supported us all together i think we are thankful to her also uh, sincere thanks to professor rk kohli ji uh, professor I is dua ji professor kan who are senior uh, professors and also uh, uh, leading personalities from whom we learn lot of things and uh, always supportive with for spsti nasi and inias uh, initiative thank you sir for being with us today and uh, last but not the least i'll thank all the audiences and all the uh, the participants of this of the today's lecture and uh, finally thank you everyone for giving this opportunity to me and inias for being part of this thing thank you very much thank you uh, dr rohit sharma and also let me add from my own side the technical support provided by mahipal ji our coordinator and anuj engineer anuj goel our ex coordinator and also our associate continues to be associated thank you and mahipal ji yeah please next lecture so this is our next lecture by dr maithili as announced by professor grover so please join us next saturday at the same time this will be interesting because i'm sure it will be something new for all of us and then in the other series that is vision for the 100 years vision series so the next speaker will be professor rudra pratap vice chancellor of plaksha university that's on national mathematics day ramanujan's birthday so that lecture is specially timed dated on ramanujan's birthday december 22nd which is celebrated as national mathematics day every year mm mm the date for uh, nobel prize in economics maybe is different yeah it, tenth, it should tenth, should be ye galat likha hai 10th next saturday is 10th next saturday 10th next saturday 10th december 10th is also the day that the nobel prizes are given uh, given so, yes so if we get a link for the ceremony we will share it so thank you all and we look forward to seeing you next saturday 11 am on this forum thank you